Hi guys, how are you going? It's Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel and as always, autodidactic means to be self-educated and you want to be self-educated guys because believe me, you don't want to be learning what these people are trying to teach us. Um, now today's video is going to be on Sydney, Australia and mud flooded buildings basically. Um, and as you can see in this first picture here, uh, this is now the Radisson Plaza Hotel, but we can see these windows going straight into the ground and they get bigger as they go along. It's sort of getting sinking in that way. <laughs> All right, guys. So, yes, today's video, Mud Flood, Sydney, Australia. Stay tuned. guys so welcome back so here we go uh, that all these buildings are from Sydney Australia um, I'm not sure exactly I think this is government house but don't quote me on that um, and yeah just to start with you can see the level of the road just uh, trading off down there I'll just get that a bit smaller for you um, and you know this looks like it used to be the original doorway here Okay, they've cut that off and made smaller doors and as you can see in the side here they've got stairs going up to the second story and you can see a bit of a window down here in the ground. Alright, so that's basically what a mud flood building is. It's been sunk into the ground. Here's another one. This is the uh, GPO, the General Post Office in Sydney. As you can see, we've got these, you know, the same architecture we see everywhere. We've got the columns, the big arched windows, the towers you know the turret sort of things antennas and um, you'll notice around a lot of these uh, buildings now this architectural type on the roof you know where they've got the sort of uh, looks like they've got metal copper or something um, that go up into turrets they always have these little metal balustrades around them so I'm thinking that's got something to do with Antiquitech as well <coughs> excuse me and you can just see all the work here it's just all over it, you know, everything is just finished to perfection, you know, and this is what we're doing today, these ugly square things. Uh, but yeah, look at these windows, straight into the ground, do, 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 all the way down, windows going into the ground. All right. Um, now, I put this in because, guys, this is a photo from 1900 in Sydney, and you can see here's a one, two, three, four, five-story stone building. And this is what we had, dirt roads and horses carrying wagons. Now this is wool, um, so you can, you know, that would weigh a little bit, but I mean you can imagine how much stone, if this is what they can pull, you can imagine how much stone they, these guys can pull at a time, it's not much, and you know, if four horses, you know, how many horses would they need to be getting all, oh, not just the, the stone and the rock, but all the cement, mortars, the iron, the glass, everything in to that's without even talking about you know the workers the cost building foundations all this kind of stuff and this was the tech that we had to do it so it doesn't really make sense here's another shot same kind of deal three-story back uh, building in the background this is around early 1900s and yeah this is what it's this is what these are the, the work you know the workhorses as we call them um, of the past, these are their trucks and their utes and things. All right, another one here. Uh, this we saw at the start. This is Radisson Plaza, and yet, as we can see, windows straight into the ground. And if you look at these arches, these doorways, they look like they're doorways. Um, they're the full size, and it looks like these have been maybe filled in. I'm not sure a bit, but they're probably windows with lintels on them. So this may have been i'm not sure maybe these you know it looks like there's another story below here so i'm not really sure what these would have been a balcony or something but also a lot of these buildings something you'll you'll start to notice when you look at a lot of them you know this bottom story you know it's classic sort of what we're calling tartarian architecture we've got the keystones and all this kind of uh what do you call that just you know the lines in the walls there but it, it's different architecture to this level which you know it looks 
you know, all the artwork, you know, the layout of the windows, everything looks different. And then again on top, it goes different again. Now this on top may have been, you know, altered the facade at, at some time and, you know, or just squared off. Um, but yeah, it looks like there's different types of architecture you start to sort of notice um, <clears throat> as you look at all these mud flooded buildings. Here's another one. This is, um, I think this is a bank, the Commonwealth Bank. And as you can see, window here, straight into the ground. And then they get bigger as it gets further down. This one looks like it's even a whole window, but these ones are going into the ground. Um, as you can see, they've had to extend this doorway down and put stairs up so you can get up into the second floor. Uh, this is the same building when they've been doing a bit of work on it. And there you go, those are windows and they disappear down. Get bigger as they go down around the corner. As the levels change. Here's another one. This is, uh, I'm not sure if this is the same building or not. But with this one, you can see, you know, this is the level of these windows going along here. And underneath, there's a window going straight into the ground. Okay, um, looks like there's more around there. But if we come down here, there you'll see them. Okay, there we go, top of a window. Window, window. Okay, this one looks like it's got glass in it. So it's probably in their basement or something and they're getting a bit of light through it. But these two look like they might have been closed off. That does look like a window there though. And as you can see, another uh, feature of this is you'll see that these windows that are buried, they're always the same as the ones on top of them. So they're always the same width. Um, obviously, we don't know about the height, but they're always the same width. You see, this is a wider window than this window. And this is wider, but we can see with this one. This is the full width of this window. And this skinnier window, which is out of the picture here, this skinnier window, whoops is the width of this sunken window here. And then as we go around the corner, yes, we get more of them going straight into the ground. All right, so this is, you know, why would you build a, a window underground, right? That doesn't make sense. And look at this building, guys. Look at the columns on this thing. And this again, like I was just saying, this is looks like two different styles of, of architecture, you know, one built on top of the other. You know, it's something that we see a lot of. Um, but again, with this one, you know, it's just a different shot of the same building. And they all have these. They all have this stonework thing around the eaves. I'm not sure what that is. Could be just decoration, but probably got some kind of use, I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, down here, window, window, window. Okay, windows going into the ground. Sydney, Australia, guys. Um, now, this is a church in Darlinghurst. Um, it started off as, as a school, I think, Sacred Heart. Um, but I'll put this in because you can see this is the level. Stairs going up to the second level here, and you can see the tops of the windows below. There's another level down below, and it, this one, I'm pretty sure that it looks like it's been dug out. So, you know, past the row level, it dips down to, to the uncover the bottom story there. But everything else is, you know, on the level of the road. <clears throat> uh, this is the old jail, Darlinghurst. Now I've put this in just because this was built in the 1850s, I think, around that kind of time. But look at the work, this is a jail for criminals. And most of them, they just killed them. This is when we were still hanging people in Australia. Um, but look at the work here. You know, turrets, massive door. You know, you can see the height of this guy. He's at this line here. <laughs> and that's like two and a half times his height. But why would you put all this work and effort and money and resources into making a jail look so ornate? It doesn't make sense. Um, this is, I think this is called the old jail. I'm not sure. They're both jails. Maybe this is the Sydney jail and the other one was Darlinghurst. I'm not sure. But as you can see, this one, <laughs> you can see the doorway, the original doorway down below. 
they've excavated it out because being at prison, I guess that they were saying, you know, well, that's where our, our dungeons are where we keep the prisoners. But again, it doesn't look like a jail, does it? You know, all this beautiful architecture. There's a clock up the top. And as you can see, these kids here, they're standing on what used to be a balcony. And again, we have this kind of double architectural style, you know, round windows to square windows. I don't know if they've been squared off at some point or not really sure. Uh, now this next one, oh no, it's not the one I thought it would be. Okay, this is this is the train state or the tram station. And again, this is a tram station. It looks like a castle. So we've got all these turrets. You know, it's like it looks like a castle. Why would you build? A tram station like this, well, which put so much effort and work and craftsmanship and everything, and again, built in you know when very small colony, new country, built in the eighteen mid eighteen hundreds, doesn't make sense. Um, now this is inside the uh, town hall of Sydney. I just wanted to put this in because you can see the <laughs> the, the scale inside here. It's massive. They've actually put a a floating floor in here and turn this into two stories but you can see this has been added later this is the original ceiling up here with all the ornate stuff on it and look, the windows go all the way up to the top straight through that floor um so who you know if they were going to build this back you know a new colony why would you build things twice three times the size they need to be you're going to use two to three times the resources and the manpower and the cost and everything doesn't make sense um <clears throat> excuse me this is um pretty sure it's the town hall this is just a view um again you can see the classic arches and stuff and as you, as we always see in these big kind of you know estate type buildings there's always geometry in the grounds always geometry and water fountains and things another shot inside the town hall i mean look at the scale look at the size of this mirror okay above this fireplace who can use this mirror you know a tall person might be able to see you know their face in it here but it's a useless mirror like what the that's not made for humans and it's definitely not placed there for humans and again look at the size of the doorways and just like with this chandelier, look how far it has to hang down just to give light because the ceilings are so high. Okay, this is, uh, yeah, it's government house. And again, it's it's a castle. <laughs> Sydney government house looks just like a castle. We've got the turrets. So we can put the little flags up there. Um, but yeah, classic um, architecture, castle architecture. Um, probably probably made to be some kind of energy generating machine I would think originally see these windows full size but on this size it looks like they sort of cut them in half you know change them out a bit you know was this an original doorway that's been filled in I mean it's just the scale of this stuff as well uh, now this is the post office the general post office just a shot of how big it is this is back um, now there's this is sort of turn of the century not that many people around really to, for a structure like this to be built post office who's sending all this stuff through the post um, looks like horse and buggies but it might be cars but I'm pretty sure this is around the turn of the century that's really just to show you the size of this place this is some of the artwork um, on the post office and again look at all this you know all this ornate ornate stuff none of it at all got anything to do with Australia apart from you know our ruling monarchs symbol here the person who stole the land and is now charging us to live here um, but yeah look at all this work that's gone into it why would you do that on a post office if you didn't need to uh, this is a drawing you can just see how built up it is. This is Sydney, 1800s. No, so I think this is uh, 1890. You know, domes, clocks, domes, domes, you know, spires and antennas. And look at this. This is a mud flood building. 
You see the windows and they're going into the ground there. Steps going up. All right, and again, there's not that many. Look at all these buildings. There's not that many people around. Couple of horse and carts. Again, now, uh, I'm not sure which one this is, government house or government something. It's some building that the government stole. But again, a window here going straight into the ground. Right there. You can see all the stonework matches it on the top. It's all built properly. It's a window. And here, window going into the ground. And see how they've had to build up this. Um, I mean, again, this looks like the second floor. So this was probably the original, I don't know, a balcony or something. And the original entrance would have been down here. And they've kind of filled it in. Um, but you can see there's a bit of a window here. But they've had to build this up to get into the second level. And they've pretty much half covered this window in the process. You know, you would not build that originally like that. You would not put a stairwell in front of a window. When when you can do this, you know, when everything is so precise and done to such a, you know, a standard, you would not do that. And of course, you know, here's again is those um that sort of balustrade stuff, the metal that goes around the top of these sort of copper domes, um, the ones with the spires. So these are different to the round domes, and they always have the the metal sort of balustrade kind of stuff, whatever it is around them. But yeah, I mean that's you know that's 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 half sunk that building. Here's another shot of it, and again you can see you know, and this all comes out. So you've got the you know Greco-Roman up here, which you see everywhere, um, and yeah, it looks like. Looks like that may have even been all the original door and gone down lower and just as a grand entrance and they've had to build up to the second story and put this in so that they've got, you know, somewhere to walk and get in. Uh, uh, this is a photo I was looking for before, I ended up in the wrong spot. This is uh, the uh, old Sydney jail again. People standing here on what used to be the balcony because you can see this is completely built out. Like we've got the uh, keystone here, we've got all the ornate stonework, got the arch, got the doorways, <clears throat> and even this would have been original, I'm thinking. And they've just dug it out and put some steps going down to it. So there you go. And of course, it, with the symmetry we always see, we've got this arch directly under this arch. You know, the, the symmetry is always perfect. I mean, just so, even just this brickwork here, look at it. these two bricks are the, and these are the same. You know, it's all the same. Two bricks in the middle, two bricks. It's just, it's just done. You know, the level of craftsmanship is just amazing. You know, compared to the crap that gets thrown up today, it's just amazing. This is funny because this is an old jail and they've got a little security camera looking out. Ah. Uh, uh, this is a Regent Theatre. This is just an old shot, uh, just to show you with this one. Um, look at the size of the top story here. And of course, again, very what we're told in a Greco-Roman. We've got the big urns, got the, the um, sort of pillar balustrade stuff, these massive arching window things, whatever they are, windows. But look at the size of this story compared to this story. Okay, <laughs> it's, literally, it's literally two and a half times as big as this. And of course, as you see in a lot of these theatres, you go in and you go straight up to the second floor. And this bit's just been turned into shops and stuff, but looks like it's sunk, doesn't it? Now this, 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 this is a train station. Now this was built in two months, guys. So I'm just going to flip over here. Whoops. That's, that's my recording. <laughs> um, okay, so this is this is what's called the Rockwood Cemetery Rail Line. It used to be part of Sydney Suburban Network, not known as the Sydney, uh, now known as the Sydney Trains Line Service. Rockwood Cemetery was built in 1864, opening 22nd of October 1864. Okay. Um, in 1862, they bought some land to establish a necropolis, which means uh, 
City of the Dead, uh, and they built this train station, and they built it in two months. Um, where's the dates here? Necessary. Uh, yeah, so the railway line construction began in November 1864. And from the 1st of January 1865, the trains began their run into the cemetery. So it was finished two months max. If they started the 1st of November, they had November, December, and then it was running in January. They built, you know, like this is a shot of the tunnel. And look how ornate it is. Pillars, columns, you know, some angels up here. Like, it's just amazing architecture. Okay, two months, guys. They built all this in two months and laid the tracks for the trains, of course. Okay, so I just wanted to show that Rockwood Cemetery Line Station. So basically built it, they're saying, um, to, to take dead bodies to the cemetery. Because, you know, back in the 1860s, there was obviously so many people dying, you know. That, I mean, the population was pretty small back then in Sydney. So it's just a bit weird. This is just uh, to show you just, just the kind of, you know, the scope of what they were building. You know, we can look at buildings and singular buildings, but when you look at the whole lot of what was built in a certain time period, like it really changes the story. Like this is from the 1790s to the 1960s. So it's 150 years. And this is just some of the, the big um, houses that were built. Um, they're sort of more homesteads. They probably were built around that time. But we've got things like this, Buckloose House. Um, Cabinet's Cottage, oh, that looked like a mud flutter, didn't it? Come on, computer. So some of these are just houses, but some of them are like this, these big grand buildings. You know, look at them, they, they, that's, you know, Tartarian, they've got the, the pillars, they've got the antennas. Um, so these aren't just little houses, these are, these are big constructions. Um, and this is just a list of some, you know, there's another huge one, we've got the porticos, you know, all the stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, this is what they built in 150 years, you know, starting from, you know, 1790, Australia, the first fleet, we're told, Captain Cook hit the shores of Australia in 1788. So this is two years after white man, we're told, set foot in Australia. And suddenly they're whacking all this stuff up. Oh, government house within two years. Of course, you've got to have the government in straight away, right? And then we hit 1800s. You know, this is 12 years after they've settled Australia. And come on, back whose house, we get something like this. I mean, that's, that's a big brick building. And it goes all the way down. So this is all buildings that were built, and there's a lot of them. Um, there's also another list here, and this is by no means that, that those, that first list that we just looked at, they were just private houses, apart from the government house. Um, then we can see here, you know, Governor, Ar Go Governor Arthur Phillip arrived in 1788. He decided that he would call the place Albion. Okay, now I've done a video called uh, Giants Real Albion. Albion is the former name, the original name of Great Britain, and it basically means land of the giants. So... The old Roman name of, oh, here we go, here we go, I should have just read this. The old Roman name for England because the sandstone heads of Port Jackson reminded him of the white chalk cliffs uh, of Dover. Okay, so this is what they say about Albion as well. I might have to look into this a bit further. I've, um, I don't know how I missed that before. Um, but yeah, a lot of the, uh, with Albion, they're trying to say that it actually means white, as in like, you know, albino. Uh, and it's called, it was called Albion because of the white chalk in the white cliffs of Dover. But if you look into the etymology, it doesn't mean that. It's actually to do with the land of the giants. Okay. <laughs> he planned to officially bequeath the name Albion at a ceremony to commemorate the laying of the first stone of his new government house on the king's birthday, 1788. So this is literally within months of Australia. Uh, Australia, uh, what was it? 
uh, January 26, 1788. So this is only a few months after that. They're building stuff already. Um, in the meantime, people started to address their mail from Sydney Cove, which eventually became Sydney Town or just Sydney. So they're sending mail off. Okay, this is uh, early. This is Sydney Town Hall and this is St Andrew's Cathedral. Um, 1871, I think they're saying this shot is. No, no, sorry, that's something in Philadelphia. Um, got no date, but early anyway. It's a drawing, so it's not a photo. Here we go, this is post office. But I just wanted to show you this as well, because this shows you, again, what, what's being built. So we've got these two are built. Central Station. Uh, St. Mary Cathedral, you know, all these buildings. Sorry, guys, just got interrupted. Um, yeah, so these are all the buildings, and these aren't even the government buildings, but this is what they're saying was built in Sydney, you know, all these different buildings. And if you look at the dates, you know, 1893, 1794, nice shot of Sydney, look at these buildings, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 storeys, and this one is as well, you can see, it looks like the different kind of architectures put on top of each other, that's the post office, all these buildings, um, the population is not that big as you can see, a couple of cars, and all these other buildings that have been built, so they've built a lot of stuff. Um, in the time, so who was building it all? Where did all the materials come from? How, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Here's another shot, as you can see, another mud flood building. And, you know, the massive, you know, doorways, windows and everything, but as we see here, window there, into the ground, and as always, it's the same dimensions or the same width at least. As the ones on top of it, same here, same here. This looks like it used to be the same as this, but they've made it into a door. As you can see, the steps going up. And these ones may have just been filled in because they're the same width as the ones on top of them. So there's all these mud flood buildings all around the world, guys. Start looking at your own cities, your own towns, you'll see them. They're everywhere. Um, this is Sydney University, and as you can see, there's windows that just go straight under the level of the road. And this is another dugout one, so they've dug out that little area behind this wall, this balustrade. Um, and yeah, it's below ground level. Oh, come on, photo. Uh, yeah, here's another one. As you can see, the windows, you know. Just going into the ground, getting big as it comes down. Classic mud flood type stuff. And, you know, again, you know, look at the size of this door here, this entryway. They've built some steps up to it, so it was probably bigger. But as it's been flooded, I mean, it looks like this is the level here. So they've, yeah, they've just sort of gone up into this second story. And this kind of stuff, guys, it's all over the earth. So go and have a look around your own towns and cities. As I said, this is another one. Um, as you can see, they've built this whole thing up here. This may have been the original door. I'm not sure what that is, but, you know, the window here, straight into the ground. And you can see them. And again, behind the stairwell, you know, behind these stairs, they've got windows. Why would you do that? But, you know, again, there's... You know, look at this, straight into the ground, straight into the ground. And these have got, you know, the proper surrounds of windows, keystones and everything, straight into the ground. Who would do this? You don't build buildings like that. I mean, you know, just trying to keep water out and stuff like that, you know, it becomes a big hassle. This is an older picture of the same building, as you can see. These are going into the ground, these windows here and here. And they've built this across. This is hollowed out underneath here, so they've, they've I think you can get into the bottom level down there. But um, as you can see, it's definitely, you know, they're using the second story here, which is this bit, as their entryway. 
and there's another story and you can see it's almost a full level down here as it gets bigger and I mean just look at also look at you know the architecture you know what we've got in the background here there's a big cathedral that's probably St Paul's you know and this is what 1930s or something someone's speeding here <laughs> another huge building um, yeah, and that's the same story all over the world, guys. All right, so that's it. Mud flood in Sydney, Australia. I hope you like that. Um, got a few pictures that I thought were interesting that are showing, you know, obviously windows going into the ground. The symmetry to show that the windows were built that way and, um, you know, the, the stairwells to go up to the second floor. And obviously just the amount of architecture, work, craftsmanship, all this kind of stuff that goes into these buildings, not, not even talking about the materials. Um, <clears throat> something's gone on, guys. Something's been going on. So they've changed our history and, um, and they're still changing it. They're still going around knocking these buildings down today, trying to get rid of them all um, because they basically found them, inherited them, um, probably stole all the tech, which they're hiding and using um we're not quite sure it's still definitely a, a a topic we need to do a lot more research into all right guys so i hope you like that um as always guys be autodidactic because self-education is the way forward hope you like this video please leave me a comment like share and subscribe if you like this content and have an amazing day and i'll see you on the next upload bye for now